Welcome to day two of our Yogyakarta trip. We are starting our day with breakfast at the hotel. Again, the taste of the food seems really off. Some of them are filled with spices, but some of them are kind of tasteless. Although the menu has changed since yesterday, and I'm guessing it's going to change every single day. Hello everyone, we are now here in Yogyakarta. This is actually our day two. Um, our day one, we went to my favorite restaurant and we did some a little bit of exploring. <laughs> my husband is staring at me through the bathroom right now and probably laughing at me because I'm not good at this vlogging. Uh, but yeah, we'll show you guys what's going on in Yogyakarta. Right now, we're gonna go to Karaton Yogyakarta, which is the monarchy palace of Yogyakarta. I've visited this place many times since I was a child. There's a video here. We were offered a guide right away. I am not sure why, but perhaps because of COVID? Back then, the public was free to explore the palace and they can have the choice to have a guide or not. But right now, due to some reasons, each visitor is guided by one of the staff from the palace. The Palace of Yogyakarta is a palace complex in the city of Yogyakarta, Yogyakarta Special Region, Indonesia. It is the seat of the reigning Sultan of Yogyakarta and his family. The complex is a center of Japanese culture and contains a museum displaying royal artifacts. It is guarded by the Yogyakarta Kraton Guards. A Kraton is a palace. Kraton means the living quarters of the royal family. Tamarind and Spanish cherry trees line the road from Krapayak hunting house to the palace, which runs from the Tugu Yogyakarta to the palace. The complex consists of a courtyard covered with sand from the south coast, a main building, and a secondary building. The buildings are separated by a wall with a regal, in Samartinandu style. The palace door is made out of tik tik. Behind or in front of a gate in Japanese architecture is usually our insulating wall, renteng or baturono sometimes with a distinctive, traditional ornament. When we step out of the palace, a guy with a motor tricycle or motor becha offered us a ride to Malioboro for cheap. I haven't ride this thing in forever since online transportation exists. Yogyakarta is probably the only place now that has one of these. It costs $2 for a 15 minutes ride, although I gave him an extra $2. Let's go, girl. Yeah. I think they only really have it here these days. They don't have it anymore. We're now on the hunt for matching batik clothing. It seems like everyone knows what batik is already. Batik is an ancient art form of Indonesia made with wax resistant dye on fabrics. I love owning batik clothing. Other than wearing a form of art, the compliments I get whenever I wear batik in the United States are always endless. They love it. Afterwards, we're exploring Malioboro. Recently, the government built a whole building for the street vendors so that they have an appropriate place to sell their products. Malioboro is a major shopping street in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. The name is also used more generally for the neighborhood around the street. This street is the center of Yogyakarta's largest tourist district surrounded with many hotels, restaurants, and shops nearby. 
Before the building was built, sidewalks on both sides of the streets are crowded with small stalls selling a variety of goods. In the evening, several open-air street-side restaurants called Lesehan operate along the street. This is the street of the artists. Street musicians, painters, and other artists exhibit their creation on this road. Less obvious to the tourists, but more for the local population, side streets, lanes, and structures that lead on to Malioboro are as important as the street itself. Unfortunately, as of right now, it is not allowed to have anything on the sidewalks. The government wanted to use the sidewalks for pedestrians only. We don't have anything on the list on what to do yet, so we're going to a cat cafe. The condition of the cats, I have to say, is super sad. They pick these cats up from the streets and put them in the cafe. That's really honorable of them, but I do think that the cafe owner needs to take better care of the cats. I think it's due to financial reason, but the cats definitely need medical attention. I know this because I've had cats for 4 years now and my cats are so spoiled compared to these cats. Hey! <laughs> you see that? The last place that we're going today is Monument Jogja Kembali. Look at this. Yeah, it looks abandoned. Maybe we can use the bumper car. Wait, someone's cat, right? Hey, hey. hey why are you so tiny? Oh yeah, this one is one year old. Oh my fucking god. Huh? Yeah, it's uh, it's that. The museum is a pyramid-shaped museum dedicated to the Indonesian National Revolution, located in the Ngalik Subdistrict, Sleman, special region of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Exhibits include ten dioramas of key moments in the revolution artifacts left over from the colonial period and revolution, a list of 420 revolutionaries who were killed between 19 December 1948 and 29 June 1949, as well as a silent memorial room. I went back to the hotel because I need to take a nap before I start my 5 hours work at 10 p.m. Jogjakarta time. However, my husband actually went exploring because I told him he should do that as he's not working at night. He should be able to enjoy Jogjakarta at night as well. So he tried to record some stuff for me. He tried to charcoal in a coffee cup as well as Taman Pelangi and night street food. Although, at the end he told me that it's really not fun to go alone and he wished that I was there. I started to think this working from Indonesia thing might be a bad idea after all, because I cannot fully enjoy my vacation. If you like this video, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.